chefs. We are recording and I am with uh, two East Coast chefs today and I'd like to welcome them to our newest edition of Chef to Chef Live presented by Club Resort Chef Association. Uh, first of all, Chef Gelé from Baltimore Country Club. Chef, welcome. Thank you. And uh, Chef Simpkins from the Dunes Club in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. How are you, chefs? Everything good? Wonderful. Considering. Cool. Uh, just as a, a caveat here, uh, these uh, two gentlemen worked together uh, a short period ago, so they were just reminiscing a little bit. So it's, <laughs> it's good to see them uh, kind of FaceTiming a little bit here and uh, getting back to uh, talking to each other. Um, so let's get into some questions. Uh, first of all, I would like to know what both clubs are doing right now as we start talking about uh, as we get into other questions about the club, where are, where's the food and beverage operation for each of you at right now as far as your curbside, uh, your dining rooms? Um, we'll get into other uh, topics at the end, but uh, Chef Chalet? Well, um, let's put it that way. We are the only department that is over forecast. <laughs> so it, it just tells you we are, we are so busy uh pantry curbside a la carte uh you saw yesterday we did 1700 meals for hospitals uh we did um we're trying to do you know barbecue kits um sunday kit i mean uh if you if you know a general manager it never stops so uh we uh we keep going trying to invent uh, things, but we we are. It's like we have never left. I mean, it's uh, busy. Be we have less staff, obviously. Uh, we are washing our own dishes. Uh, it's we're in the same boat as every other club. I mean, we we trying to find a way, a safe way, which is always the hardest uh, challenge, to provide the members. Uh, and we have countless thank you emails and 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 notes of, of it's very much appreciated in, in those unprecedented times, so. That's great, you know, Chef, it, it is always good to hear it. It, it makes it worthwhile when you, when you hear the positive uh, feedback on it. It makes you feel like you're, you're doing something uh, in the right direction. Is your a la carte dining uh, revenue equal or above what was forecasted for the last couple months? Yep. Above? Yep. And we, we average, um, it, it goes from 70 to 100 covers. And it's extremely quick because um, by seven o'clock we're dead. We, yeah. do, we don't do nothing for lunch. Very, very, uh, very small for lunch, which we never did much anyway when golf and all that is open. But dinner from five to seven, it's nonstop. Uh, um, so sometimes the curb makes more, sometimes it's a la carte. It depends obviously on the offering. Uh, uh, tomorrow we, we fire in the pizza oven. We have 80 pizza already on the books, you know. So. Are, you, are you, when you say curbside and a la carte, so there, your dining room is open right now? Well, the, the line, the dining room is not okay. open at all. Okay. Every, everything is curbside. Okay. So sometimes you're going to have a member who has two curbside family meal. It's a simple entree, simple salad, simple soup. And then they might have three covers from the a la carte side. And they might have a bag of pantry that you need to pick up. So it's all curbside. Chef Simpkins, uh, tell me about your F&B operation right now, please. Well, first of all, uh, thanks for having me on. And it's nice to be with one of my mentors, Chef Jalay. I got to work as his number two for a couple, couple a long time, and uh, it's it's nice. He talks about that pizza oven. I tell you what, that pizza oven is amazing. If every club had a pizza oven right now, I know the revenue would go up. So I knew is when it, this happened, I knew Chef Jalay would be pulling this pizza oven out. Is it is it a conveyor conveyor pizza oven, Chef? Or no, no, there? it's all handmade. Uh, the sous chef hates it. It makes it makes a pizza in two to three minutes. 
Oh, it's cool. like 800 degrees. It's amazing. I've burned myself many times, but it makes yeah. great pizza. Uh, so anyways, yeah, so actually we're a little different right now. Um, our golf course didn't close. Um, so we actually have a restaurant that's the turn restaurant um, that people were getting to goes out of. Uh, so that when I started here a little over a month ago, um, that was our main thing was everybody coming in there. And we're, we actually sit on the beach. So even – we deliver to the beach too um so we do a, a curbside at the beach so people come off the beach they pick up their bag um give us our member number and they go back to the beach uh we just opened last tuesday for outside dining um so with all the rules um we can seat about 30 to 40 people outside uh no tables larger than eight in the same household um and actually today is Friday, this past Tuesday, we opened the dining room uh, for 50% occupancy. So, uh, yeah, actually last Saturday night was the first night that uh, we had outside seating and to-goes all at one time, and it was the perfect storm. Uh, you know, you, you have, um, we, we do delivery too, so you have to-go orders, you have fire first course, a fire second course, and then delivery so we had a lot of things going on um the way we fixed that is we did we now only do to goes from four to six our family package meals so um we like chef says at seven o'clock it's dead it was the same way with us like at seven o'clock it's all over with so now we have two sessions we have the four to six and then we have a couple minutes and then we get geared up for dinner and we go through the whole and putting food on a plate, Chef Jolie, it's, it's weird now. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah, what are these plate covers for, right? <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, plates? Oh, what's yeah, a plate? Yeah. Uh, so, That's yeah, interesting. We're... Chef, I'd like you to um, just uh, just describe the dining room a little bit because uh, I think uh, a lot of clubs are just getting into that right now. A lot of clubs are just starting to say, hey, dining room. Um, maybe some of them are um, – starting to spread out tables and anticipating open and kind of feel that out a little bit. Tell me a little bit about how that went the, the first couple nights and what, what maybe um, some of the challenges were with that. We, we have a good uh, upper staff, AGM and GM, that really set the, set the standards of how we were going to do this. We actually opened up a little part of our ballroom to move the tables out a little more. Um, we have the silverware in plastic gallon uh, little zip ties with the reservations name on it uh, you can only come in if you have a reservation there no walks ups are acceptable um, so when they get to the table they open up their own touch their own silverware um, we are still in mask and gloves right now as, as a service staff um, but yeah it's a, it's a little different um, the members seem to be very understanding um, but it's They're been working out it's actually been working out great they're happy to get out. I imagine they're just happy to see different Yeah, it's it's they're very you know we're right on the beach, so that sitting outside having dinner and a glass of wine and you know seeing the waves crash, uh, the the members are definitely very appreciative. And um, you know the thing was is for lunchtime we always did a buffet. We didn't know a la carte. Of course, now that's changed. We have an a la carte lunch instead of buffet. So no more buffet, no more happy hour food. Um, uh, it's, it's definitely different. But I think we are one of the states that is opening up sooner. Um, and so far, so good. Um, but we're still doing the to-go's orders. We're still doing the carry out. There's still some members that are enjoying that. And I know uh, Chef Jolay said that it's probably going to be a standard with him keeping the to-go I, I think we're having a business now inside of a business. Yeah. So, you know, I, I you know, Chef Jolay taught me very well. You listen to your membership and, you know, our members are telling us what they want. So uh, comfort food has been very something, uh, you know, a prime rib. Oh my God. Something simple as prime rib. They're killing it, you know? So we've been trying to do the comfort food here and it seems like that's what the members want. Um, nothing too fancy. They like to, the comfort food in, in this time. So when you say fried chicken, I know we were talking a little bit about fried chicken. Uh, I'm actually doing fried chicken again tonight too. We'll go through two cases. Uh, our offerings tonight is surf and turf fried chicken and uh, red snapper. 
And so we offer to goes for two and four, and then those specials will also be in the dining room. Cool. Uh, hopefully, uh, good luck with that. Let's. Um, I'd like to get into social media and how it plays into what you, what your message is to members. Are either one of you blasting out your your specials either visually or uh, just via a, a text or a message uh, during during this time with social media, or how are you getting? Or using social media right now, Chef Tilly. So, so we have a communication department. And everything goes through them. Uh, we send a ton of material. I can tell you, uh, all emails or if you want uh, communication for the club about a certain situation ready to happen, that email is already draft and ready to be sent. Um, uh, our general manager is very, very proactive with that. If the Governor Hogan would have said last uh, uh, Wednesday at 5 p.m. we're reopening the restaurant in the next three minutes, uh, <laughs> we would have that email with all the rules that need to apply yeah. to come to Hickory Club. We had the same thing, golf reopened last Friday. And as soon as the governor says golf reopen, in the next 30 seconds, the email went out with all the rules. So it's kind of the same. Um, here's the issue we have, and you're gonna laugh about that, is we are sending so many emails that our carrier are blacking us out uh, because the volume is too much. And so half the members get the email, half of the other members is complaining they don't get the email. But it was, it was um, at the beginning, it was an issue. I think it is resolved. It's above my pay grade at, at that point. Uh, but we get all the communications ourselves on, uh, on the laptop. And it, it, yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot. You, you Chef got Simpkins. to be that aware. Chef Simpkins, are you taking pictures of food? Are you sending it out on social media and any platform? Um, nightly specials, no. Um, the virtual wine dinners, well, we've stopped them now, but before that, yes. Um, our, all our specials go out, uh, I've been doing them a week ahead of times because people want to plan their menu on what day they come in. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of course, all the membership we have young, you know, different ages, they like certain things. So, uh, we've been doing different nights. Uh, we did a uh, hibachi style night the other night where you pick your protein, everything came family style. It was a bowl of edamames on the table when you sat down. Um, so we did an Asian night where we did, you know, General Child's chicken, uh, Mexican night. So we've been trying to, you know, get it a little different than just our menu. So we send those specials out for the whole week and let the membership know. Um, and again, we had great responses. Cool. Chef Jelly, uh, it sounds like your GM has everything kind of lined up. I'd like to hear maybe a sneak peek at what, when the, the membership or the county or the state says, okay, you can open up a pool, what does that email read? Uh, um, well, that's a big unknown right now, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I think before the pool reopens, we need to have the outside dining reopen. Um, now, is it 25% of capacity? Is it maximum 50 people? We just don't know. This is the most frustrating part of what we do. We have to have five different scenarios in order to be ready for the one that actually is gonna happen. So that email is changing by the minute. Uh, we, have, we have sent a survey uh, two days ago asking people, uh, are you going away this summer on vacation? How long do you think it would be fair to be you staying at the pool? How many kids do you have? Blah, 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 blah. I mean, there's, there's about uh, 20 questions to try to figure out, again, what the membership wants. Uh, I promise you reservation at the pool is not going to go smooth. I yeah. mean, there's some people who think the pool is a, is a very expensive uh, babysitting service. Uh, they drop the kid in the morning and they pick them up at night. Uh, you know, we're also going to have an issue with uh, uh, the uh, 
uh, the Red Cross is not certifying any uh, lifeguard this this year anymore. Right. So, you know, we are lucky we have somebody that can certify lifeguard on staff, but that's going to be an issue. Uh, the only place you're safe in the pool is actually in the pool because chlorine kills the virus. Beside that, we already took measure and, you know, we removed a one umbrella every other two. Uh, again, is it considered outside dining? Uh, we are considering serving rather than them coming to the counter and um, order their food. Uh, th there's a lot going on that it, it just... Uh, yeah, I don't, think anybody, I don't think anybody really has a handle on it. Uh, I, I think everybody I've talked to is just in such a holding pattern yep. as far as, you know, what individual states, individual clubs, everything is doing. And, and to your point, um, you know, they, they haven't been able to train uh, caddies. They, they haven't been able to train lifeguards. All those, uh, you know, kind of high school, college type positions that um, are going to be kind of tough to all of a sudden put in place if, if things do open up a bit. Uh, Chef Simpkins, uh, any crystal ball about your pool? Yes, we open next Friday. Wow. So... Uh, uh, oh, wow. We are taking, we're doing two hour limits on the pool, uh, reservations only. Um, we're doing only 20% occupancy, I believe. Um, so, yeah, again, reservations, um, food will be served, that way they're not coming through. I think that's a good idea. Um, but yeah, we're, we're set, ready to go. We're, we're allowed to open next Friday for Memorial Day weekend, which of course is one of the pool's biggest, biggest days. Um, no towels, they have to bring their own towels. Um, you know, we've set the chairs so feet apart and like Chef Jolet said, the safest place is actually in the pool. Um, but we can't police them, you know? Kids like to get in the pool and they like to play, they like to touch and stuff. So, you know, it's up to their parents to get that straight. But yeah, we're, uh, I know Baltimore does a huge July 4th. I think it was a 2200 Chef. Yeah. Not so, this year. Actually, so yeah, 4th of July is on uh, Labor Day weekend now. <laughs> really? So they moved it. So yeah, our 4th of July here, I, I heard, is 1,200. And uh, way, we we're supposed to do it for 250 is what they're allowing. But is it worth it to do all the fireworks? And, you know, how are you going to feed the people and everything? So, yeah. It's, the phase are gone. Um, yeah, it, 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 at it least is. temporarily. So uh, that's that's the only way you're really going to feed 2,500 people, 1,400 people, 600 people, whatever it might be. Uh, that's going to yeah. be a rough one. Yeah. There's an initiative that Club Resort uh, is coming out with, and it's called the Road Back. And we're trying to get the clubs talking about normalcy and coming back. So let's talk. Let's touch base about Memorial Day, and let's let's move into a holiday weekend, um, notwithstanding Easter and Mother's Day that we already went through, but looking forward and, and trying to, to get some kind of normalcy, and I'm not sure if it's going to be there or not, but talk to me about your Mother's Day, if uh, Chef Jelly, if you could um, let me know a little bit of insight so on that. We, we, we actually did, uh, I, I'll talk to you about Easter and Mother's Day. Easter, we did everything hot, uh, pick up day of, and we did almost 350 people. It did not go very smooth. It, it, was, it, was, it was, I mean, nothing major, but a lot of fun. I ain't doing it again. I'm done. So, <laughs> you know, again. You heard it, you heard it Chef Simpkins. Never again. Yeah. He's not doing it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, so, you know, I talked to um, Michael from Farmington and I talked to some other uh, chefs and I said, what do you guys do? And I think, with Mother's Day, we did cold um, Wednesday. Uh, uh, we, I don't know if you know, we use jot forms. They are, they are great. You know, they go online, they pick. And then we had one person, one menu, if you want any add-on. I mean, it was a um, uh, crab cake and beef. Nothing surprising in Baltimore here. But uh, anyway, they picked up everything cold. We gave them all instructions. Uh, how to read, we cook, and it, it was a slam dunk. We did 200 people, and guess what? I have been enough 
Mother's Day, the first time in 34 years. So it was a, a big, big deal for us. And then as far as the Memorial Weekend, uh, actually just finished, we're doing a, a, a barbecue kit. Very basic, again, they're gonna cook their burgers, you know, the coleslaw, the potato salad and all that. And then we're probably gonna do Monday a, a, some type of barbecue theme curbside, but not a la carte. And, uh, you know, that's where we're planning. If, if the pool reopens, it's a different story. We don't know that yet. But I'm ready with the menu at the pool. Um, I don't have the staff yet, but again, everything is in limbo. What do you think, Chef Simpkins? Do you guys have a blueprint for Memorial Day ready? Uh, we're just going to do the pool, and it's on a Monday, so you know, like most clubs, we're kind of closed except for the pool. So we're just doing. Uh, Ask the GM if they wanted to do specials. They said no. So all we are offering is our turn restaurant in the pool. So it's burgers, quesadillas, and chicken tenders. So pretty, pretty classic cool pool pool fair for sure. Pool fair, yeah, I definitely agree with Chef Jalay on the mothers and Easter. Uh, Easter was my first week here, and they did it, you know, cold, hot, twenty million different items, oh. and it was it was not fun. It it really wasn't, and. Uh, for Mother's Day, I'm twitching a little bit right now, thinking uh, about it. <laughs> yeah, Easter was definitely a learning. You know, when I I used to be the chef at a farm there in Baltimore, and we did 1,200 meals to go, but it was all cold. It was all picked up. Cold is a lot easier on the kitchen with reheating instructions. You do it the day before. You bag it. You can double check it. You run it as a banquet. You put it in your cooler. Yeah. Um, but hot is definitely a lot more. Uh, we did it hot too. Um, we did around 130 people, but I set it up as a pretty much a, a plating station where everything was in Schaefer's and I was like, give me one of this, two of this, three of this. And uh, it actually worked out really great. But that was definitely, we're definitely learning as we go on how to make this the best way. I talked to a couple chefs here in Chicago and this week, they put out a concept that was a car pulls up and they serve that car as they wait in the parking lot. Uh, one gentleman did, uh, one chef did hamburgers, did a very simple hamburger, um, cheeseburger or chicken breast, little chip. They pulled up, they said, I'll take one cheeseburger, one hamburger, one chicken. Uh, they had it kind of wrapped. They were grilling right there uh, next to the parking lot. They pulled up. Uh, package it for them and send them on their way. Has that concept uh, reached your desk or is there any talk about that? Chef Shelley? Yeah, well, how about a driving movie? Yeah. So we, we're going to do that. And then obviously you park your car, uh, you stay in your car and you, we, they, you take orders and we, we deliver, like you just said, burger, very simple food, obviously. Uh, but they're gonna be there for two hours for a movie and uh, you have an a, a opportunity to bring revenue. Because uh, 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 we have, we're working on graduation. My concern, if you have a lineup of 75 cars, how long are you willing to wait for a burger? Uh, uh, so, you know, all the logistics have to be worked out. If they come for an activity already and, you know, they can wait you know, while watching the movie, I think it would make a little more sense. Um, you know, it's a little more practical to, uh, for, to deliver the food. What could be fun? Can you, can you talk about that real quick, uh, Chef Jale? Before we uh, started recording, you were talking about doing something like that for graduations. Are you also thinking about packages for graduation? In other words, the catering to go? Are, there's graduations to think about, there's showers, those things that we're going to be in your ballroom. Uh, have you switched gears on menus and started thinking about the to goes on that? So, you know, we have about, we have identified about 300 kids, either from high school uh, or the graduation, possibly for my membership. We kind of know who isn't, you know, uh, eligible for that. And we want to do something fun for only one day, maybe for a three-hour span. So that's that's the burger okay. in line on that. But we're also going to do kit for home. Um, if the pool opens, 
I'm, I'm, we're going to try to do something for graduation pool. The cake business is still going to be booming because it's a matter of picking up curbside, not an issue. Because we, you know, we can do up to 100 cakes a, a week. Pastry uh, 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 chef is not happy oh. on those days. <laughs> um, the the that, that I think that's where we're going. Uh, uh, once again, we have several um, alternative, and you know, as soon as the governor says any direction, we'll pull the trigger. Um, but I, I, you know, regardless of how we go normal or not. I think we're still going to do wine society on the computer. I think that some people who are asking that we keep doing it. Uh, I know, I think we're going to be busy when we reopen, but then not everybody is going to feel comfortable coming back to the club. And I think the virtual stuff, uh, it might be here to stay. I mean, I, um, in, in some fashion, I, uh, uh, Chef Simkin was talking about the wine dinner. I have not done it yet. Believe it or not, we have not had the opportunity, but we have done bourbon tasting, we have done uh, a wine society, and it's extremely popular. They love to be at home. We give them, a, uh, they pick up their food around 4 p.m., uh, and then it's online. I mean, um, I think that some of that stuff might stick around more than we think. So. Um, we already have comments that they, they want to see it after, even the curbside, uh, the family meal. Maybe not as often as every night. Maybe you do that once, twice a week. And by the way, you know, I'm almost up to $75,000 in pantry items, in, in toilet paper and, and burgers and salmon. I mean, this, this is, I've never seen that before. And um, so. Yeah, a lot of people are having success with that. Chef, what's your... Uh, one more question, and we'll have to get to Chef Simpkins on this. But uh, what's your markup on your your pantry? I've heard anywhere from ten to thirty percent. To so we started with fifteen percent, and then now we are at twenty five percent. But uh, I have twice a week they have to order Monday uh, until one p.m. and they pick up on Wednesday, and then they do Thursday one p.m. pick up on on the Saturday. And every other day, we changing the pricing because some of those pricing, yeah. each fork, uh, all of that is going up. Uh, so we are adjusting. But 25% is what we do. Chef Simpkins, we have to circle back on you on that, um, on that, that drive-through concept and everything like that. Has anything hit the, hit the block with you guys with that concept? I, you're more of... You're more on the beach, though. I'm not sure if that really. Yeah, we're mostly relaxed. You know, one of our, we're the number one golf in Myrtle Beach here at the Dunes Club. So everybody, we, our parking spots are, are mostly by our golfers. They're here. They're ready to play. Um, so, you know, the movies and stuff like that hasn't really come about. Um, we've stopped doing the virtual wine dinners. We're now just focusing on the members actually coming back you know, we're a little bit lax of a state um, with because we're not as big of a city as Baltimore. So we're, uh, we're we're getting back into the, to be honest with you, knock on wood, a little bit of the norm, you know, with people coming outside, now inside, it's, you know, so it's, it's, it's actually nice to, to see the membership and uh, getting the pool back and slowly adjusting. You know, I came from Palm Beach, Florida up here. And it was like night and day different down there. You know, you couldn't find anything on the shelves here. It's a lot more relaxed. Um, but what I'm going through right now, and like every other chef, prices of food is going up, just like Chef Jalet said. So, you know, I'm having problems. You know, I wanted three ribeyes. I couldn't get them. Um, so it, it's definitely trying to get, never in my career, if I had a problem getting chicken. We, you know, we had to get... We, we had to get a different pack, different size chicken. So, um, you know, all, all the restaurants, there's 3,000 restaurants in Myrtle Beach. Every corner is a restaurant. And the thing is, they're, they're based on the tourists. So, you know, down here, we have a lot of the big buffets that are all you can eat seafood. So God only knows how they're going to react. Um, so... That's great. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good to hear some normalcy. It's good to hear that kind of uh, road back theme 
with you. You're the first chef I've talked to in a little while that had a dining room open, uh, is going to have a pool open. So uh, hopefully we're headed in the right direction. We don't have a ton of time left. A um, couple of uh, real quick questions. Uh, chef Jelly, tell me about the, tell me about your charitable efforts today. 1,700 people? No, uh, it, it was yesterday. It actually was a yesterday. surprise. So we actually did for that hospital, and it's no, it's no surprise anymore. It was St. Joe's, uh, the University of, uh, of Maryland. And in April, I have done 250 wraps every other two days for them. Um, for the whole month of April, and then uh, you guys, you guys are gonna appreciate that uh, how last minute that was. Uh, suddenly, we get a phone call, and they had an appreciation day for heroes yesterday, and they said we want thousand meals. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know, thousand wraps, no big deal. I said, no, 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 no. We want three choices, and we want it hot. <laughs> And I'm like, okay. Uh, first of all, I had to reopen our second clubhouse uh, that has been closed for two months now, you know, Rotom Park. And I'm like, how am I going to do that? I mean, I, I had two sleepless nights. But then on Monday, no, I'm sorry, on Saturday, it went, hey, can you do 150 more? Sure. And then the kicker, was Monday afternoon, my GM called me and says, can we do 1700, 1353 actually for lunch and 347 for dinner. And I was like, my wife said, I think the blood left your face. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, wait for it, wait for uh, it. <laughs> uh, uh, Chef Simpkins will, will, will know that. I really said no because uh, my general manager doesn't take no very well, and I, I fully agree with it. So I say, let me, let me, let me wrap my, my head around it. So unfortunately, you know, we had, uh, we do our own um, smoked brisket, and I had no time anymore to do all that because you know I can only do twelve slabs at a time. So I had to find some uh, smoked meat already. You know, I mean, it was just uh, uh, I did. 450 pounds of salmon, uh, we had uh, half chicken and we had some smoked meat. Uh, coleslaw, potato salad, you know, a cookie and a brownie, nothing major. Uh, but uh, everybody pulled in and then uh, when we arrived at the hospital, I mean, we had a, a, a row of uh, clapping and honor. I mean, it, it was like, you know, it gives you chills. Uh, it, it was for a good cause. But I tell you what, I slept very well last night. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of weight off your off your chest, knowing that it's it's it, over it, with. Uh, if you check on Facebook, uh, Tom, I, I posted just all the paper bags that are lined up, and it's uh yeah. Cool. Been there, done that. Uh, Chef Simpkins, you're fairly new at the club. I try to end up with asking one question about if you would take off something off your menu that would get you fired you're you're a month into your <laughs> month into your job right now but um it's it, it's almost too easy there's there's going to be a crab cake involved here somewhere but um what would you guess it is well uh I, i've been to a few different clubs and of course there's no thing better than the bcc tomato uh, that goes back a hundred years uh, okay. I don't care who you are, what your name is, you take it off or you do it different. Um, at all that. the clubs, uh, you know, the Everglades Club was cream spinach. Never have I run spinach through a grinder before and wow. made bread sauce and tasted cream spinach five times a day. Here, believe it or not, it's um, don't mess with the fried food. Uh, we have a certain way we fry shrimp, fish, oysters, um, and we have candy bacon, which is very simple. So it's actually very nice here. Um, all, so, all the Weight Watchers, uh, all the Weight Watchers items. Yeah, you know, uh, and fried, uh, it, fried definitely, food. Uh, def I'm definitely learning a little bit more about the low country of, uh, the way things are cooked. And, uh, I'm learning a lot. You don't mess with the fried seafood basket. Uh, it's called a kidnappers, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a story behind it. I can't remember it right now, but uh, it's been here forever. And yeah, you don't you don't mess with that. And I have one lady 
all she does is make the chicken salad, egg salad. Uh, she's been here 20, 30 years. And my first week here, I went and stood right beside her and said, show me how to make this coleslaw. Show me how to make, you know, there's, yeah. there's eggs in the eggs in the uh, chicken salad. So yeah, I, I've learned a lot. Uh, so we did, um, uh, we did uh, also cook for some hospitals around here. Uh, it wasn't as intense as Chef July, thank God. Uh, we did uh, we did pasta and chicken Alfredo for our first first one was for four fifty, and then we did eleven hundred. So uh, I, I think uh, I think all the chefs stepping up. You know, I'm seeing it all over the place. Chefs stepping up and helping to feed these hospitals. Yeah. I think it's amazing, and I think it's what we should be doing. Um, God's given us a great talent to be able to cook. Let's, let's take care of these people. I mean, I've been, you know, we wear our mask every day and it gets that behind the ear kind of feeling and yeah. exactly. Chef's got the, up, the, 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 the really good one. Um, we got I more money. Imagine. Huh? We got more money. Yeah. A lot more money. <laughs> a lot more money. Um, but I can't, uh, I can't imagine the nurses, you know, I see their yeah. faces where they're, you know, it's sword and pressed in, you know, God helps them all. So uh, I'm glad All we can, long. I'm glad as, as chefs, we can, we can do, you know, take care of them and uh, feed them. Cool. So. Is, is she crab on the menu all the time? Yes, is sir. Every day? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Chef Jolet would be very proud. Um, I came in here and there was peppers and onions in the crab cakes. Uh -huh. And I'm like, that's the way you, <laughs> you get in trouble and get shot in Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> so. As soon as everybody found out that uh, I lived in Baltimore yeah. for a while, uh, I changed the crab meat, the crab cakes immediately. And we're actually serving them with our filet tonight as a surf and turf. But okay, uh, cool. yeah, definitely don't mess with Maryland style crab cakes. Yeah. Chef uh, Jelly, tell me about this BCC tomato. <laughs> well, we have a couple of items. Uh, we also have what's called frosted crab. Uh, but the BCC tomato is um, flour, celery salt, uh, drenched uh, tomato, deep fried, brown sugar in the oven. Is it a green tomato? Nope. It, 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 hmm. it, it's a red tomato. At no comment. Okay. I, I I I don't know why they like it. I I it just it's just one of those things that. We do tons of cases, uh, especially in December. Um, Crazy. And every club around here has some type of different version of it. Some they, they do sauteed, some fry. I mean, you know, but it's. Uh, yeah, that's you just that's yeah. it. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Ch Chef Simpkins was laughing at that one. It was funny. Yeah, I, I can say it for him. It's horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, hey, I don't know. You, man. Uh, it's gotta be it's gotta be mush, right? It, it especially when they sit in a hot box and they start yeah. like weeping out the water and brown sugar and <laughs> and the membership is like try it you gotta try it they're so good uh, I know there's one person in December that all he does is BCC tomatoes yeah. so God help us all and I adore tomatoes I could eat tomatoes every day in the summer and I still yeah there's your line huh. There, there's your line right there. That's it. That's my line. <laughs> yeah. Chefs, uh, we've run out of time. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, good luck this weekend. Have a good time. And um, uh, if there's anything else, um, you know, we can do for charity and help everybody else, I think that's a good message. Thanks for having us. Thank you.